So there we go, another week back for a bit of Super League Raw Weekly. Good evening, one and all. Good evening, sir. Are you well? Very, very well indeed. Very well indeed, as always. Been plenty of merriment ahead this evening. Well, I do hope so, sir. Indeed. We will be announcing our Coach of the Month. We'll be uh, announcing a Player of the Month. And we will, of course, be uh, showing for the first time our Team of the Month for June, as well as all the usual fun and frolics. But it'd be a miss of me, sir, to not, uh, to not mark a special occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, a certain debut happened on <laughs> Sunday <laughs> for the Warrington Wolves women's team. Over to you, Greg. Yes, my eldest, Rebecca. Signed last yes. week and appeared on the wing against Leeds on Sunday. Absolutely, we won't mention the score, but she did very, very well. Baptism of fire, I think, is what yes, they call it, yeah. sir. She uh, faced Amy Hardcastle and her her chums, and uh, came out of it quite well, despite the scoreline, which we won't mention live on air. <laughs> absolutely. Well, now, well, as usual, you kid, well done. The usual, absolutely, very uh, proud father, mother, and wider friend yes. network, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, good evening to Joel, Steph. Uh, Carl Gile, uh, Giles, Stephen Massey's with us, Alan Clegg's with us, David Wright, Ka- uh, Kyle Aithway, that's a new one, good evening to everybody, they're yeah. all flying in, but yeah, really, really good there, and uh, good news as well, uh, just put it on before we started, another 166 <coughs> people Fantastic. have joined the Fans Forum this week, which is which is great news. <coughs> Speaking of news, Greg, the uh, yes. official nominees uh, for the Super League Player of the Round have been announced. These are they. Uh, Arthur yes. Moore, who, of course, was there last, last month. Uh, John yeah. Asiata, Edwin Ipape, Tom Johnson, Jack Wellsby, and Blake Austin. Um, yes. Are you surprised by any of those? No, I thought Lamb might have been in there as well. Yeah, I think Lamb's He's had very, a superb month. Jack lucky. Wellsby, um, not quite He's sure. It's been good, yeah, but there's been better. There's, there's been better out there. Yeah. So, let's say Lam. I, th- I thought. I think yeah. it's had a great. Yes. Uh, Cameron Smith has played really well this month. He as has well. indeed. He has uh, indeed. And you know, you thought a couple of Wakefield players might have forced their way in there, seeing as they're up to any form. Uh, only only two two wins, mate. Not yeah, but much. even so, two good wins. Two good yeah. wins. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I my money would go on Iparpe if I was a betting man. Yeah, yeah, Edwin has had uh, a fine June, a fine, fine June indeed. Uh, so we'll keep a, we'll keep an eagle eye on that, as uh, I'm sure by the time we're here this time next week, that will be announced. In a moment, we will announce our Coach of the Month. But before we do, let's get into a little bit of news that's been floating about. And we, we, we spoke very briefly before we came on air. A lot of, uh, a lot of things going on around Catalan. Um, yeah. Catalan uh, announcing... I'm not announcing as such, but a lot of rumours, some announced, some not announced. At the moment, what we know is that next year, 2024, Mitchell Pearce expected to be leaving, possibly go yeah. back and finish his career at Sydney Roosters. He's I, the vibe. Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, uh, Tyrone May expected to leave. Yeah. Chan already announced Wigan. Uh, yeah. Whitley not announced, but expected to go to St. Helens. Tompkins yeah. retiring as we know. Uh, Kieran expected to leave, Wigan circling him. Yeah, and today, really, so he's joining Wigan. Yeah, and Ikevalu. Yeah. Also, to today, rumoured mm, and other Super League interest as well, yeah. is what yeah, he's I think. I think he's favourite to go back home, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this happened last year at Catalan. They lost a lot of players, so much so that in my predictions, I I didn't put them in the top six. <laughs> what do I know? Um, so, you know, it it could be just the the refreshing refreshing that the, the squad that that the coach thinks they need. Surprised that Kieran, if Kieran goes, Wigan will get a great signing there if he goes to Wigan. Master. Master. Would would appear that that would mean Toby King is definitely coming back to Warrington the, yeah. next season. Yeah. Um, oh, Kevin Worrell is flying in saying there's big rumours that he pape to Saints. Oh, now well, that the would... Darryl, well, well, the Darryl Clark has yeah. very quiet, and there's a lot of rumours that he's actually done a U turn and wishes to remain at Warrington. There's a massive that would that. explain a lot because I've heard that this yeah. week that yeah, Darryl Clark Clark's is... going nowhere yeah, and, and that Dwyer stay. isn't going to Saints and Dwyer's not coming to Warrington. No, all Saints, which was the other rumour. So, yeah. 
I mean, Dwyer in the reserves at the moment for Hull. I mean, yeah, again, his relationship with Tony Smith potentially a problem. And here's another one that, you know, get your thoughts on this one, mate. Farge being linked to move to Catalan. Now, yes, considering yeah. how much Watson has put on Farge, his fitness and him betting in the team and he's the engine room and all the rest of it. You know, if Farge was to leave to go to Catalan, what, what does that say about what Watson's been saying about Farge all season? Well, it could be that Farge wants to go to Catalan. Farge himself wants to change. Um, relationships do change. You know, relationships within it, within each team. Players that are in favour one minute out the next. I think that could quite possibly be Farge wanting a change, wanting out, and, and wanting to go back to France. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, you, you might not be. Uh, you might not be wrong. Oh, there. Yeah. You might not be wrong there. Um, yes, uh, so yeah, uh, looking at this, uh, another couple of bits and pieces. Uh, good business being done by Saints and by Wigan, both uh, yes. extending Comrade Hurrell and Abbas Miski. The latter yes. Miski, I have to have that's a great bit of business, I have to say. Yeah, um, yeah, but McDonald extending at Leeds as well, four years, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and deservedly so. Um, played well. He has, and I mean, you know, not many like like a lot of the players that played in the lead side last year. Papi being one of them, it's one thing doing it in the championship; it's another thing doing it in Super League. Yeah. There was a lot of questions over could McDonald do in Super League what he did the, at the step and he is, yeah. and he is, he's doing really well. Fair play. Uh, the other bit of news: Liam Watts has had a successful appeal tonight. Saw that Watts? Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, I mean, I mean he, he must be terrified of stepping on the pitch. He gets banned every time he bends a blade of grass these days. But yeah. You know, yeah. God, God forbid he signed for Warrington. He'd have to retire. Um, but yeah, uh, Liam Watts, a successful appeal, which generally, you don't generally win your appeals. Well, with it's the, a, with it's a collector's board. item. Whoever his, uh, is. whoever his brief was, mate, I think other teams will be circling that person, whoever it <laughs> yeah, may yeah. be. Yeah, uh, maybe, really yeah. bad news. I mean, just going back to Huddersfield, really bad news come out of Huddersfield this week. Harry Rushton out for the season. That's a real yeah. hammer blow for the young man and, and for Huddersfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It's a shame. You know, we see it quite a lot. We've seen it at Leeds quite a lot with their young players and at Hull. You know, the, the, yeah. sometimes you wonder whether they are being rushed in and expect to do too much too soon. It's a good um, question, my friend. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to, you know, say anything bad about coaching methods or anything because I don't know. But sometimes, you know, Cater at Hull was one who, who was a great prospect and then suffered yeah. injury. Really uh, pleased to see him back and doing so well, though. Yeah, Joe Cater. Yeah, the, the kid at Leeds. Oh, what's his name? His name escapes me. His hamstring went. Oh, Newman. Like, Newman. Uh, yeah. yeah. So rumors, you know, uh, again, rumours that Newman. I think somebody put it in the chat as well. Again, whether it's uh, any validity to it or not, but a lot of rumours about him to Saints, which with the whole announcement, I just don't see that. Yeah, it, it's kind. Of, I think. I think it's. I think it, it's a media thing, isn't it? They seem to want to link all. The decent youngsters to a certain team. It happens in football. Happen on United with top of the tree. Every decent yeah. youngster was going to United. Same with Liverpool. Same with City. You know, and it's it's no different in in any other sport. I don't think so. Might it be interesting? It'd be interesting if well, he uh, if he does go. Bit of a link there, mate. You talked about the media. Supposedly we were going to have a TV deal by the end of June, and June has come, and it has gone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, names banding around. Dazzin, or however yeah. you say it. Online streaming platform. Yeah, I mean, um, Dazzin, I thought they made yoghurt, but, you know, um, I'm not going to sing it. No. <laughs> but, yeah, streaming. So the same number of games are going to be shown live. They're just going to be divided equally between the three providers, apparently. Sky well, Channel 4 and Dazzin. That's what I've heard. You well, know. yeah. Well, well, well. the thing about, I think, again, what I've heard on this Dazzin one is that they actually what they want to do, whether this happens or not, I don't know. They actually want to move to an NRL model where actually all the games are played at different times and all shown live and streamed. And I, think so. I think that's the sticking point with the deal. So, I mean, that, I that think would think be Sky want to, Yeah, Sky want the number of games to remain the same, from mm. what I've heard, and divide it between the three broadcasters. Whereas Daz mm. want all the games. Well, the yeah. full it, all streamed, which, you know, I mean, what's your thoughts? Fans forum, get involved. I mean, obviously, I'm a massive advocate of the NRL app. You know, I've got that. It, you know, yeah, just too. over a ton a year. You know, I get to see every NRL game live on the app. It's brilliant. Yep. Um, you know, would you want that for Super League? Would you sign up for that? I mean, hundred. I mean, like I say, it's about hundred and the NRL one's about hundred and thirty, hundred and forty quid a year. You know, if you had the opportunity of watching every single Super League game live, would you part with hundred and forty quid? 
Yeah, you can see Sky Sports. All day long, yeah, there's a key Sky towards. Sports. It's the only thing I've got yeah. Sky Sports for, mate. Exactly. And don't I don't watch anything well. apart from the cricket, obviously, and that's not going too well. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the, the, again, a probably sticking point is have we got the number of officials to have every game with a video ref? But we could expand, you know, again, you know, that, that's not a bad thing, you know, it, it may make us expand. So, yeah. So you, but, you would but, think that would be welcome. Do you think the RFL would welcome that? you think the teams would welcome, you know, so much got you know, I, I, I watch the amateur level a lot and I watch the girls' women's rugby league a lot. There are some really good up and coming referees who are coming through. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll Give tell them you the what, opportunity. Mate, mate, money talks. Yeah, if if they came along with a yeah. with a with a wad of cash, believe you me, money talks. And yeah. If they yeah. came to the rugby football league, like, like, oh, let, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say that Dazzam comes along with a triple the bid. Of Sky and Channel Four. Do you think the Rugby Football League are going to turn that down? Oh, do you know Super what? League are going to turn that down? No, no. no. You think you IMG? Know, you think you IMG know, would say sense, turn that down? If they are, if you could rely on the RFL for making sensible business decisions, still bar anyone, um, you'd say yes. But yeah. uh, you know, the rumours have it they turned down a Channel Five deal a couple of years ago that was worth more than the Sky deal because yeah. they didn't want a change. Now, yeah. you know, whether that's true or not, uh, you, and you, with the RFL, you, you very well could think that that could have happened. You'd like to think that they will go where, where the money is, where the investment is. Well, every game being shown live IMG platform can only be good for the game. Well, IMG have got links with these, haven't they? Because they do a lot of uh, the and American hasn't, sport. Hasn't Hearn as well? Yeah, well, like, they gave him a billion, didn't they? Yeah. They give him ma massive money. Yeah. Um, yeah. The interesting thing here, if not, no, it's Kev in the chat. The thing about this is, right, all, there won't be five games on a Friday, Kev. Yeah, they'd be actually exactly like the NRL. There'd be one on a Thursday. Yeah. There'd probably be a couple on a Friday, three on a Saturday, one on a Sunday, or a couple on Saturday and a couple on Sunday at different yeah. kickoff times. There's, That's there's, how they do it. Yeah, there's, there's eight, how many games? Six games, isn't there? Yeah. So, it's, so Thursday, Friday, two Saturday, Saturday, two one on Sunday. Thursday. Normally, as a rule, yeah, it's about yeah. Uh, it's about seven games in it. Fourteen teams, seven games. That's so, yeah. Um, so yeah, normally it's definitely one on a Thursday. Uh, sometimes it's two on a Friday. Sometimes it's one on a Friday, three on a Saturday, two on a Sunday. But they just work it, and uh, yeah, and it's there, isn't it? It's there, and you know all this talk about not every ground's got big screens. If I if I am if, look, if Dazzam comes in and offers a massive set of wedge, Old Trafford hasn't about, got a big screen. Don't worry about it's big screens; the they'll be installed. Though. You know, we're yeah. talking mega books here. It, yeah. it, it, it'd be revolutionary for the game. So exactly. it's one of them. If Dazzin comes in and, and they're serious about this, trust me, for all the infrastructure bit, the refs that Greg Ware was talking about, that'll happen. It will yeah. happen. Money talks. So it'll be interesting to yeah. see. It'll be you know, interesting. Like, like I just said, Old Trafford doesn't have a big screen, but we mm -hmm. still have a grand final there every year. This guy just send one in. It, it works. Yeah, of course it works. You know. It works. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, so anyway. That, that's something to keep our eye on. It is. Anything else that's caught your eye, sir? Um, just have a Connor Wynn looking to be on his way out of Hull permanently. Yeah, yeah, um, saw that. Yeah, yeah James Busy. Child was talking about how he was almost assaulted by a coach uh, when he was referee. It's quite interesting because Richard Silverwood's been quite vocal in his in his um, criticism of, of the game in general, and ref, including referees as well this week again. Looking like uh, a man with an axe to grind, sir. Yeah, yeah, and Dan Norman could be a permanent fixture in at Lee next year. At Lee, yeah, at Lee next year, yeah, yeah. I mean lots of comings and goings, uh yeah. I'm sure between now and, and the new season starting. Um should we uh should we have a look at who our coach of the month is sir? Let's, we do let's, that? So let's of do course that. coach coach of the month Super League Raw as you know take everything into account. Um we have had two different ones already. We had uh, of course it was Powell early doors in the season who? we've got uh Powell, Powell. Uh, got the got the one for for April in May. We had um, Adrian Lamb. Yeah. So let's now take a look and see who we have got for this month. Here it comes. So our uh, coach of the month for the month of June is no surprises, I'm sure. Steve McNamara of the Catalan yeah. Dragons had to be, of course, uh, brought the Catalan Dragons up. Uh, to the top and the summit of Super League. Played four in Super League, won four, 150 points scored, 74 conceded. In the month of June, he has knocked off the Wigan Warriors, Hull KR, 
Lee and also Hull FC. We, we put the Hull FC one in. I know it was the 1st of July, but every other fixture was played in June. So we've lumped that in uh, to yep. July and we'll start uh, from this week's fixtures for July. So, yeah, Steve McNamara, of course, on a seven-game winning streak. Can't really argue with that, can we, really? Not the, no, not in the slightest. I'd have, been, I'd have been surprised if it wasn't McNamara. You'd have sat um, <laughs> so again. I'd have been sat. <laughs> yes, yes. You're out the door, sir. But no, I'd have been surprised if he wasn't Matt Namara. I mean, you know, uh, as I said right at the top of the show, I, for one, didn't thought Catalan might struggle this year to finish in the top six, given yeah, the comings and incredible. goings uh, in the in the off-season. But uh, fair play. Fair play. Recovered from the two defeats by Warrington. I've got to get that in there. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Okay, whoa. Hey. Steady on, steady on. Hey, hello. Thought the good Lord was coming for me then. Uh, carry on. Somebody, somebody was coming for me. Uh, I, I shared the wrong <laughs> stream by all accounts. So uh, thank you to that. Somebody's just put that in the chat. I didn't spot it. So uh, happy days. Uh, but yes, I mean, you know, every, everybody pretty much uh, in agreement uh, that it oh, had yeah. to be. Easily, uh, easily, easily. Matt Mara, uh, incredible uh, performance from him. Uh, this uh, this month, Steph Sale, uh, he's in agreement with it. Uh, I'm sure everybody else is in agreement with it. Well done to Steve McNamara. I think he's caught a lot of people by surprise this year with uh, certainly the, the recruitment side of it um, and how well they're playing. So, well, he, he, yeah, he, he does. He's one of those coaches that takes a lot of flack for some reason, Steve McNamara, and, and doesn't get talked about with maybe the respect he should, to be honest. So, you know, fair play to him. Yeah, he's, you're right, he's, mate. he's not. He's not one of the. He's not one of. The, I'm sure he won't hunt me down and kill me for, for saying this, but he's not kind of one of the glamour coaches. Yeah, yeah you know, no. he, he, he's out of sight, out of mind as well. A lot yeah, of time. well, he is. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. because it, it, I mean, you know, they don't. They don't really. I, I, again, we talked about the promotion and what did Catalan bring to the competition last week. They don't really do an awful lot to promote Catalan Super League. You know, really. You, you don't, you know, no. you don't. I mean, over here, you tend to get the press conferences if you go on the different channels. And the other problem is, as well, a bit of a stumbling block for, for, for English fans is that all the press conferences are running French, pretty much. Yeah. Which again is and, a, and, and they've got their own deal with French TV as well, yeah, which exactly. might be interesting when it comes to the new deal with, with Dazen getting involved. That absolutely that could very well be a stumbling block as well because the French like to keep keep their, their games to themselves, don't they? You're absolutely spot on. Right, plenty more to get through. So that's the coach. I wonder who our player of the year's, uh, the, the month's going to be. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, let's now take a, a little look at the Super League Raw fans for a mini league. As you can see, Ryan Birch remains at the top. However, uh, well done to Reg Allen this week. He uh, got 681. He's, he's clawing him back in. Uh, so uh, not over yet, Ryan. Not over yet. Don't uh, that, don't start getting the old tape measure out just yet, sir. Uh, you don't do what Warrington fans before. were doing in April. Absolutely. Don't celebrate too soon. <laughs> don't celebrate too soon. Right. Let's take a look now at the tries of round number 17. Here they come.
Some absolute beauties there for your viewing pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Greg, uh, what were your thoughts on those? Was your favourite? Um, my favourite was Robbie Mulhern's. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, you know, somebody else again, not deemed good enough for Warrington. Uh, absolutely That's ripping it true. up. That's not true. Um, that's not true. I'm being mischievous, sir. Uh. You are. That's not <laughs> Let true. Let me be mischievous, sir, uh, please. Not true. Well, yeah, as but... posh people say, as posh people say, mustrophous. Absolutely. Um, well, yeah, Warrington's, I thought Rob... Warrington's loss was uh, Lee's game there. Of course he was. It was a contract dispute, wasn't it? Rob Mulhern, great try. Wormsley-esque. Uh, I would have gone for the uh, Sam Walters one, but it was just Leeds running it. Uh, Mattel tier and you know me and you could have scored past well, him. Well, I mean, we'll get to Friday that in a sec, but, but you know, Lizone, I saw him coming on. He, obviously, I sit in the north, we've seen him come on, yeah. And I thought, and I actually said to, to my lad and my dad, I said, Lizone's getting this. You could just see he yeah. came on, he was sent on, first receiver, bang, got the ball, ball into Walters, in goes. It's lovely constructed drive. Great try. No, seriously, that was a good try. Was one, and I love the uh, the uh, Jake Bibby, uh. Rehearsing for Strictly there with his little pirouette. He did well, didn't he? And Alex Gerrard yeah. as well. I mean, that was a strong, very strong carry yeah. from Alex Gerrard. Benison was, was a good there. try too. Delighted for Benison. Delighted yeah. for Benison. Yeah, yeah. sold a lot delighted. of strength to score that Benison. I've got to. Well, I, I did a piece on in uh, on uh, in the sheds with that in terms of the ben Benison stroke Ritz and Ritz yeah. seems to have been getting a bit more of a look in both played ten games. For me, Benison. Has to play. I, I think he's a quality player. I really, Ritson really think. has got pet. He's got a lot of pace to burn Ritson. Yeah, but um, I think Benison's, Benison's got more I think to Benison's his game. a better all-round player. Spot on. Probably Spot better on. suited to fullback, if I'm being honest. But yeah, but Mr. Wellsby's got that position, hasn't he? Well, you so. may, he may well move into the sixth spot with Benison at fullback and Ritson on the wing at some point. A lot of love in the chat for Robbie Mulhern's try. Let's say a few more hellos. Uh, Kerry Morrill, obviously. Alan Warburton's with us. Tony Parr. Anthony Mack is with us also. Terry Fishwick. Sydney Gatskill with us. David Wakenshaw. Fantastic. Alex Sharp uh, is with us as well. He was delighted. And, and a brilliant Facebook post by Alex Sharp. Got to give him his due. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> see it? Yes. It was immense. So for yes. those who haven't seen it on our Facebook yes, page, really. our Alex decided to take a picture of the Warrington Wolves stand with Stop the Season Now written yes. underneath it. <laughs> Absolute comedy goal yes. from Mr. Sharp, <laughs> uh, who enjoyed his who enjoyed his night out at the wire, I'm sure. Uh, outstanding. <laughs> outstanding. Right. Uh, it's time now to announce our um, team of June. That's right. We're now going to the team of June. June, where's the through. year going? Where where's is the, the year going? going? But the team of June is just about to be announced. So uh, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen, the official Super League Raw team of June. Here it comes. <laughs> So there it is, the team of June. Uh, some phenomenal performances uh, from these players in the month of June. I actually, uh, I think I put, a, I think I put this out there on a post where we added it all together. You'll see that that'll be on there tomorrow, where you added all these statistics together. But okay, let's start at fullback. Jack Wellsby, Greg, uh, three tries in the month of June, eight try assists, eighteen tackle breaks, four clean breaks, and three hundred. And 75 metres. Simply superb. Yeah, he's Mr. Consistent now, isn't he? He's kind of cementing his place in our team of the month each month these days, it seems to be. But yeah, a yeah, slow start to the season. Uh, Wayne Stacey, just a quick shout out to Wayne. Wayne is, is actually a good lad, interrupting his holidays in Benidorm and he's watching us this evening. Good man. Well done to you. Oh, uh, good lad. <laughs> right. Then we come to the winger, the first winger, Abbas Miski. Abbas Miski scored five tries in the month of June, 14 tackle balls, seven clean breaks, 57 carries for 428 metres. That's 7.5 metres a carry. Abbas Miski, extra year at Wigan, in great form. Really pleased for him as well because he's yeah. he, he's way down the pecking order or he seemed to be way down the pecking order at the start of the season. So that really made up for him. And tell you what, he can move. He can, and he ha can how move. do Wigan do it? How How... Well, I know they do it. They've got a great recruitment policy, but, you know, they've got some great wingers at that club. Yeah, Wingers nice. who would be a massive yeah. success at any other Super League club. 
Well, if they hadn't if they hadn't have exercised that year's option, he would have found the club very quickly. Oh, definitely, he's had definitely. Eighteen tries in twenty appearances. Abbas Mesquita at the Wigan yeah. Warriors quite a return, outstanding. Yeah. Right, uh, well, this might surprise some. Arto Romano of the Catalan Dragons in. He's of course been uh, in the team of the week last week, uh, if you recall. Three tries, two assists, fifteen tackle busts, three clean breaks, fifty-three carries for three hundred and fifty-nine meters, six point seven average from him. Uh, Romano. Keeping out Ike Favalu, probably the reason why he wants he, he'll be off. Um, nobody, Maybe, can force, yeah. nobody can force him out. He's in great form. And why not? If you if you if you if you've earned the right to wear the shirt, then you shouldn't be. You should keep it until you know somebody uh, somebody's ready to fill it. And great, right. yeah, made up for it again. Really pleased for Absolutely. him. He, he can't if he didn't start the season, did he? He came. I don't think he was there at the start of the season. He, so he's played he's, wing a couple of times, but throughout yeah. June he has played centre. Yeah, so probably yeah. his position now is centre. I yeah, don't think he is a winger. He's going to take some shifting, mate. He's going to take some yeah, shifting. Good on him. In the uh, in the second central role, <laughs> Reese Martin, who again been playing centre, been a right bonus this one for Leeds this year, banging him in there. Three tries, one assist from him. Uh, Eighteen tackle busts, three clean breaks, sixty-seven carries for five hundred and ninety-five meters, average eight point eight per carry, with seventeen out of twenty-one goals and eighty point nine percent conversion rate. Reese Martin's got his kicking boots back. Yeah, he's been all right, hasn't he? <laughs> it was a bit dodgy, if you remember, at the start of the season. Was it Catalan? Yeah, he, he couldn't. Catalan? He couldn't hit a bound door from five no. yards at the start of the season. But no, no, he's uh, he, he's missed a consistency. He's, he's, he's for a few seasons now. He's he's been a real solid signing for Leeds. Um, yeah. Again, somebody who doesn't make the headlines, who can, tends to fly under the radar a little bit. If you're yeah. outside of of the Leeds bubble, but a great player, scores some great tries as well, yeah. which people kind yeah. of overlook. Uh, but yeah, I like Reese Martin. I'm a big fan of Reese Martin. I think he's a great player. All I want to say to Kevin Wall is yes to that. We won't be talking about it, but yes is the answer. Um, well, I'm going to look at here. Uh, <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Yeah, just, uh, just a little. Do you want bit me to go? Uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, right, um, back in here. Uh, where are we now? Oh yes, we're on the second wing. Out with Tom Johnson. Tom Johnston. Oh, seven tries, 19 tackle busts, four clean breaks, 58 carries for 555 metres, 9.5 average for, for Tom Johnstone. He has been absolutely sensational. And just proves what he can do when he stays injury-free. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute quality. Obviously, Absolute the, the, quality. Weather, the weather down in the south of France suits him and he's on fire. He's the been phenomenal, mate. Yeah, showing his true quality. Yeah, Another yeah. player who obviously uh, is playing for a contract and has been absolutely outstanding in the month of June, Blake Austin. A try for Austin, four assists, 13 tackle breaks, six killing breaks, 70 carries for 498 metres, a halfback doing 7.1 average. That is outstanding stuff. Yeah. When Blake Austin's in the mood, he's almost unstoppable. Yeah. The problem with Blake Austin is uh, he's... Not always in the mood for it. Correct. But he's at the that's moment. been his downfall. But at the minute, he, he was always going to show up against Warrington. Yeah, he was absolutely. Always, he was always going to show up. You know, and, and I I was a big fan of Blake Austin when he first came to the club. And I'm glad to, genuinely glad to see him doing well. Um, that's two games. We should, getting... I think we should have been more okay. patient with him. I really do. Well, he's uh, he's obviously put the cat amongst the pigeons with the Herrington full time. It'll be interesting to see how that yeah. one pans out. No surprises at Scrum Half. Lachlan Lamb, absolutely outstanding. Two tries, five assists, 14 tackle breaks, three clean breaks, 58 carries in the month for 287 metres. Of course, that's not really his game, 4.9 average. But Lamb, when he gets his hands on the ball, things tend to happen. Yeah, he's a classy halfback. He's an old fashioned halfback. Um, you know, he, he, I've said before, he, he reminds me of the uh, of an Andy Gregory or a, a Sean Edwards type of halfback. That that's yeah. what genuinely awesome. what he, remi- who he reminds me of. Yeah, the Andy Greg, absolutely. He's that. He, yeah. he's got that. Yeah, he's that type of that swagger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Greg was quality on yeah. it. Absolutely yeah, quality. Yeah. Um, right. I mean, look, we're, we're in the mix now. A lead, lead, lead out of that middle <laughs> quadrant there. <laughs> People will be accusing us of uh, being the lead. No, it, it is, it is, it is what it is. There was a couple of I me. Mean, Paul Bourne's had a good June. Don't get me wrong, he was close. So too Alex Warmsley, he's had a good June. He was close, but there's no denying. Uh, Tom Amone, 
one assist in the month, 11 tackle breaks, two offloads, 60 carries for 475. That's down the middle, ladies and gentlemen. That is the wingers yeah. and centres the forward 475 meters and averages 7.9 and had enough in the tank to do 90 tackles as well Tom Amone yeah. what a yeah he's a big he's a again you can't argue with the stats no and he's a he's a beast it's consistency I mean that's he's the thing a, about yeah. Tina June it's about yeah. being consistent I mean we you know you you've got Morgan you've got Wellsby whoever's done the panel you know, have have the professionalism to pick a fullback. Should not be up for yeah. negotiation. For me, yeah, yeah. it should be one player out of a team because how can there be two players that are best in for the month in one team? How can that happen? You know, if you're yeah. going to do a short list, and then you know, in terms of, and that's where the Morgan Wellsby one on that um, just doesn't doesn't sit your point on yeah. Lamb perfectly placed. I mean, where's Lamb? Pick Morgan or Wellsby. Lamb's got to be in there, and it has yeah. to be. Yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, anyway, a man who was in there is Edwin Ipape. Uh, three tries, 24 tackle busts. <laughs> okay. Uh, three clean breaks, three offloads, 30, only 37 ca- carries, put 261 metres in them carries, seven uh, metre average, and 100 tackles. Uh, other, pl- other people have noted in there, Parcel's not been too bad uh but to be fair yeah. it was an absolute landslide for Pape on that one yeah I, I, you know it's, it's kind of and again I, I sound like i sound like a, a stuck record with this one but i was racking my brains about who edwin Apapi reminded me of and it's a play it's Dwayne man who used to play for warrington a long time ago Dwayne man some people might remember him but he, he's very, very similar to Dwayne Manning that he can burst through a tackle and he's he's, he's evasive and he, he offloads well and he tackles well. Um, and for me, Dwayne Mann's been probably one of the best hookers I've ever seen at Warrington. And that, that's yeah, who he reminds me of. He's Mann. that, he's that yeah. you know, that low centre of gravity. He didn't start off so well. Um, it was good, though. People were saying he was disappointed and, you know, was he living up to the hype? Well, he certainly lived up to it now. He's, he's gradually improved over the season. It's I nice think mate. he's been... Um, he's getting stronger, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, every game if, he, if, he carries on, if he carries on like this, God knows what he's going to be like towards the end of the season when it comes to playoffs. Yeah. It's going to be Absolutely. unstoppable. Unstoppable. Um, yeah, I mean, Dwayne Mann, uh, after Desi Drummond as a kid, he was my second favourite player. He used to love a bit of Dwayne Mann at Wilders, yeah. I have to say. Great shout. Uh, Ian Judson's coming in for some pelters. Uh, he's got his uh, black and white glasses on this evening. Uh, Ian, mate, um, as far as Jake Clifford's concerned, we only pick one scrum half. We don't do what other people do and put a standoff at scrum half and a scrum half at standoff. He, his stats and his performances do not compare to Lachlan Lamb. He was second. But he but Lamb pipped him, simple as that. Savelio, I'm afraid to say, uh, did not. Yeah, he's had a couple of good games, but he's not had four consistently good games. That's the reason why Savelio isn't there. And uh, Mr. Truman, uh, no, Blake Austin was better, I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cliff, Clifford is a good shot. Clifford's Cliff, had a good Clifford month. was second best. He, he, he's he had a good shot. month, Clifford. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, Clifford. There could only be one winner, though, mate. And yeah, in, Lamb in, in was any better. other month. Clifford's performances would have probably put him there, but not this month. Yeah, unfortunately. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Then we come to Robbie Mulhern. Now listen to these for a set of numbers, right? Robbie Mulhern, two tries, twelve tackle busts, one offload, fifty-eight carries for five hundred and seventeen meters down the middle, an average of eight point nine. I mean, we're talking Warmsley territory here. Yeah, uh, you know he's beat Warmsley for this. I mean, Warmsley and Vaughan were good. Mulhern was. By far away better, and 126 tackles as well. I mean, that's just immense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and t- immense. consider that consider that props are usually spelled. So he's probably done that over 50, 55 minutes rather than 80 minutes. Yeah, yeah, phenomenal, but again, mate. that's phenomenal. Phenomenal. And then we come to the man who's bound probably for St. Telly's. I mean, again, you talk about numbers, what a set of numbers these are, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Whitley, four tries, three assists, six tackle, uh, sorry, 14 tackle breaks, four clean breaks, 28 carries for 223 metres, which is an average of 7.9 and 87 tackles. Uh, <laughs> Mr Whitley, outstanding. Yeah. And you know what? If he goes to Saints, that's, they're going to have a frightening team again next season. Yeah. 
absolutely mate. I mean, that's a great again. great acquisition if he is on his yeah. way there. And, and again, Number somebody 12. else who started off slow. Who started off yeah. slowly and yeah. has, has started off slow, but has really had a good gene, mate. Really, yeah, really and, had and a good kind team. of you know supports coaches' ideas that it's not how you start. It's th this bit now in, in June and July and the beginning of August, this is where you consolidate your position in the league. This is Sports where you mate. put the performances in. And, you know, when players Sports like on, Whitley and, and Johnston and, and players like that, that you can understand how Catalan are, are top because this is their consolidation period now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Liam Farrell, the, uh, keeping his place in the team month on month. Another great June for Farrell. Two tries, four tackle busts, one clean break, 59 carries for 378 metres, 6.4 average and 131 tackles from him. Great effort. Yep. And then yeah, finally, and again, just sorry, out sorry, time, sorry, go on, mate, go on, go on, go on, go on. But again, and I'm, again, sound like a stuck record, started really slowly. He did indeed. He, 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 did he, indeed. Had, a, he had a couple of poor games by his standards. Yeah, the first absolutely. three or four weeks of the season, and then spot on. He's coming good again now. The, the last, the last five or six weeks, he's been phenomenal again. Correct. And then the battle for loose forward. Last month it was Asiata. I know. I'm sorry. No, it's Cam Smith again. I think. My apologies. Yeah, Cam Smith yeah. had it last month as well. I, again, you know, we do this fairly. No, no rose tinted glasses here. We call it straight. Uh, we get a lot of analysis. We look at it. It's painstaking, and we 100% back this team. If anybody who wants to try and disprove it, give it your best shot. You're probably not going to be able to. Uh, Cameron Smith. Um, <laughs> but it's true. Just yeah, about, I know it's true. I know. Just about edged out um, John Asiata. Uh, and in third place, Ben Garcia. That's pretty much where those forwards were in the month of June. Cameron Smith. Uh, one try, one assist, nine tackle breaks, one clean break, uh, 66 carries for 402 metres and 121 tackles to boot. Another phenomenal, phenomenal month by Cameron Smith. Yeah, had some great performances this month. He uh, has indeed. Yeah. I can't so argue now, with any of that. Cannot argue with those. So now the fans form can really get to work. For those of you who are watching us this evening, one of those players obviously has to be the Super League Raw Player of the Month. The question is, who is it going to be? We will be announcing it a little bit later in the show. So uh, by all means, fill your boots in the chat. Who would you have from those 13 uh, as your Player of the Month? Try not to be biased. Uh, you know, play, <laughs> play, play and Clifford great. doesn't qualify. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's not 1-13 to 13 Warrington is there, in there, is it? You know, let's play this with a straight bat, ladies and gentlemen. Who would your player of June be out of those 13? And we'll give you a couple of shout-outs a little bit later on. Right, let's take a look at the top performers from round number 17. Here they come. Perfect with the boot for Wakefield Trinity. Great to see uh, that one there. And, you know, we mentioned him a bit earlier, Greg. You know, Joe Cater. Great to see Joe yeah. after his injury concerns. Yeah, Tom, uh, Tom Davis as well. Punch. Tom Davis, Tom Davis as well. well. Big fan phenomenal. of Tom Davis. Had a phenomenal, phenomenal month. Uh, loads of them already getting involved in terms of who the player, uh, their favourite player of the month has been, which is uh, which is good to see. Uh, we'll get to them a little bit later on, but no, well done, Alex Sharp. Absolutely right. Sam Walters, I think, was in the top five, uh, maybe the top yeah. four top forwards. In uh, he's he's a frightening post prospect, Sam Walters. He's been outstanding. A frightening last prospect. Games. Last two games, he's really peaked. First, first yeah, two in the yeah. month, not so much. Yeah, he's, two, he's, you would think the move to Wigan would 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 probably shoe him into that England squad for the World Cup. Well, maybe, maybe. Right, we have to do you this. It's would, an absolute travesty. That's no disrespect to to Leeds, but you'd think that would 
Oh, do we have to? We have to. We have to do this one. Warrington, of course, against Leeds. Leeds, um, obviously, running riot at that. Well, I say running riot. They I mean, ran right in the first 16. The first 16, and then after that, Warrington, like they've done against Wigan, they did it against Catalan, they did it in, sorry, Castleford, they now did it against Leeds. Leeds got off to a flying start. Warrington, really poor. And then they clawed the way, started to claw the way back into it. And if, you know, Philbin doesn't knock that ball on well, at 14 6. <laughs> You know, well, and, and something happens there, we tend to go. It, it could have been really interesting, but some really easy yeah. on the eye tries from uh, that one there from Walters. Some really, really not easy on the eye, just easy tries, mate. Yeah. Just easy, easy tries. Um, Schoolboy stuff in defence from Warrington, I'm afraid. Yeah, really. your mate Matauti had another fine game. Oh, I tell you. But, you know, I've never played at a professional level, so... The thing is, when, when when we said a few weeks ago, stop the season now, Warrington unfortunately took us seriously and did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But here's Cam, I mean, look, at, look at that pass there from Smith. Oh, I mean, look at that. I mean, just too easy. Two passes, bang, out there you go. Um, good try, though, from Warrington, uh, from uh, that man, Matty Ashton, continues to impress for Warrington. I mean, yeah, the, uh, yeah, apart from the two four passes of the knock on, this was a great try. Well, I think the last one was. <laughs> But, but again, I mean, you know, I mean, look, a couple of things there. I mean, let's just let's just talk That's about a this. Pass. It may, well, the thing the thing about this, there's two things on the night, wasn't it? Uh, that yeah. you pa- pause about. this a second. Pause it a second. Let's pause no, it. Let's have a little chat about this. Yeah. There's two things on the night. The first one was the try that was given on the field of play, clear obstruction. You couldn't yeah. write it. You just yeah. couldn't write it. it. Goes up as a try, um, yeah. and obviously it's a no try. And yeah. then the Warrington try, he sends it up. Um, it's given, and then he sends it up again. He asked him to check. The, he asked him to check it again for the grounding. I mean, I there was never, no doubt that he grounded the ball. That was never it, up for debate. In however many years we have had a video referee at a game of rugby, I have never once seen the referee ask the video ref to check his decision again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable. Um, make make of that what you will, but it, it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to give Ratchford the benefit of the doubt. I actually that's think, forward. I mean, that's super slow. I mean, that's that's forward. I mean, there's no doubt. I think he gets that. I, I've got no I issue do. with that. And that's forward. I think there's two forward passes yeah, there. I don't think he knocks passes. that on. I don't think he knocks that on. I'm going to give him, I'm going to give Ratchford the praise. That was a, to catch that ball and to get it out a bit, maybe a bit forward. Bit of quality skill, that. There's, uh, <laughs> yeah, is ever, have we got, have we got, he's saying, can you check that again? I've got, I've got a tenner yeah. on Warrington being nilled. <laughs> oh dear me but then uh, of course this this i mean i say Lazon just come on it was a planned move bang have a bit of that sammy lad beautiful step yeah. into walter i mean that's a lovely try it's yeah um, try. of all people myla of but all people myla we we didn't deserve <laughs> nope. Nope. We, we, we didn't deserve to win we we were clueless on the Leeds line, we were clueless in defence the first 20 minutes. I mean, somebody put on Facebook, um, Sam Cassiano made an average of 1.7 metres. If it had laid down and put the ball out in front of him, he'd have made more yards without moving. Right, I think, look, nobody's more, <laughs> nobody's more passionate about Warrington than me, but I'm also a realist. And the thing, that, the thing that's doing my Sweden a little bit at the moment this talk about Robbie Mullern. Robbie Mullern was, was offered a contract at Warrington. And at the time, we had Thomas McKayley. There's not a single oh. Warrington fan that would have... And, and, and I think even Lee fans would concede this. For the first eight rounds, not a single Warrington fan would have questioned the decision, McKayley over Mullern. Not a single one. Hindsight, no, you're is right. wonder, you're hindsight right. is a wonderful thing. So let's just part that one straight away. I, hang on, then, I was on about Cassiano. no. Brigade is what I'm on about. I'm on about the Facebook brigade. So, oh, right, right. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, yeah. We then, we, we then, we then, I mean, uh, the facts are the facts, right? We look at the last four games. We've had a different halfback combination, four games on the spin. Yeah. You're not going to win rugby league games if you're changing your halfback combination. And people will say, well, why has he changed it? He's got no choice. Matauti is not an halfback. He, he sampled Dufty. That means that Dufty, you know, the, the whole cohesion of the Warrington team yeah. in the last four weeks has fallen apart. And there's not a single team in Super League, even St. Helens. If, you, if you've got players all playing out of position, week in, week out, being moved around. Yeah. I mean, St. had it a little bit at the start of the season when they had a couple of players out. 
you're not going to win many rugby league games. Yeah. Warrington I, I, need the Challenge Cup semi-final that week off. They need to get some bodies back and then start to judge. Look at what is actually happening at the club. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to play devil's advocate here, though. There are some occasions, this is me playing devil's advocate, so don't shoot me down, no. but there are some occasions where all that's been needed is bringing somebody in to fill a gap rather than changing the whole team round. We've got a halfback, and again, me playing devil's advocate, we've got a halfback on loan to Castleford. Yeah, OK, he didn't have the greatest game against Lee. It's his first Super League game for however many years. He's... Yeah. Why send... We've got two halfbacks, one coming back from injury, one injured. Why is that player, that halfback, still on loan when they can be recalled, for one? Mm -hmm. Even even if they don't have a great game, they are still a natural halfback rather than putting a centre in there or a fullback in there. Yeah, I, just, so I, 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 can, I can't understand, argue with that. I can understand some of the criticism. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about Mulhern. And I was being mischievous earlier on about Mulhern. Um, I was being mischievous about Cassiano. Um, but I think that I think a lot of people are, are a bit confused as to why six or seven players have their positions changed to fill one position. And I, I think that's that's what is winding a lot of people up on social Mate, media. Can't, I can't disagree. And, and and that I don't disagree with. I mean, you know, we saw yeah. Matautia left on. He brought Hol Holroyd was having a good game. Oh, Holroyd was, he was, he, one of the players, he was one of the best players on the pitch, yeah. Holroyd. So, should have took Matautia uh, Matt, Matt off. He was having a mare. Put Renshi in the centre and leave Holroyd where he is. And I'll tell I'll tell you the other thing. I'll tell you the other thing as well. That, and again, I'm, I'm with you on what you're saying about, you know, having a bit of faith in youth like Saints and Wigan do. Mm. Lucas Green in the academy on Saturday in the 30-28 win that Warrington got in the academy. It was a great game, by the way. And yeah. uh, Fer Fergus McCormack, there's a name for you. The number six that leads. What a player he is. He's one to keep an eye on. Everybody before the game let's have a look at what Sinfield's got McCormack absolutely put him in the shade he was incredible but in yeah. that game Lucas Green at loose forward did the full 80 he was unbelievable unbelievable yeah. I know it's a different level but for me Lucas Green's already in and around the first team bang Lucas Green at loose forward I agree I agree and I, I think this would have been a fantastic opportunity for again not, not Powell bashing but Daryl Powell was brought in because he he said he would promote the youth wherever possible. These last four or five weeks have been the perfect opportunity for him to bring these players in, these young kids in, and see what they can do. We've lost anyway. We wouldn't have lost anything. No. The right. results have been exactly the same as if he'd played 13, 18-year-old kids. In fact, the, the, 18, the 13, 18 year old kids could have quite possibly done a lot better. But this was his perfect opportunity to play some academy team, some academy players awesome. to blood Spot them on, because we might oh. need them later in the season. If another another one's Tom Whitehead. Again. Tom Whitehead, another one. He's one to Tom watch. Whitehead, to, you know, uh, he, he right should have played. Should have he should have give, give Riley Dean more than one game. Right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna stop the Warrington there. It's not a Warrington show, and actually, no, you know, not. I do if, apologize. If we're, not, if we're not careful. If we're not careful. The fans will be telling. It will be uh, saying that we're trying to get. Uh, the orchestra to play, but the problem is they can't play for laughing at us, mate. We're that upset about. <laughs> I know we're anyway, a laughing stock out. We're a laughing we stock now. But anyway, stock. that's fine. We can take it on the chin. It is what it is. Rugby League's a wonderful thing, it's isn't it? It's the hope uh, that kills you. It is indeed. The Albert Goldfort Medal uh, table three for Blake Austin, two for Sam Walters, absolutely. And then bizarrely, one for McDonald. Didn't see that on the night. Sorry, his stats were poor and all. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd be tempted to give it to Myler or something like that. Yeah, didn't, 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 didn't. Honestly, mate, where, where. Has come from God only knows, only knows. Oh yeah. dear, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, let's get into the next game. So, the next game that we've got for you in terms of the highlights, St. Helens Castleford. Um, a spirited first half performance from Cass, it has to be said. Yeah, I thought you'd, you'd yeah, on a hide into nothing, they did really well. Yeah, first half, very much so. Very yeah. much so. Uh, what Saints yeah. do, what Saints um, do, Riley Dean got 40 20 as well, mate. Say again. But Riley Dean, 40-20 in the first five minutes in this game. Mate, Riley Dean. He's, he's, a, he's a decent player. He, he had yeah. a couple of bad touches. Again, it's, sorry, people, it's worrying to go. Yeah. But he, had a, yeah. he, he had a couple of yeah. bad moments. 
yeah. against Lee that unfortunately led to, to led to, to Lee scoring. But other than that, he had quite a solid game. Good try there from Wellsby. I mean, when you consider the conditions, let's just take a look at that again. You know, to put the brakes on like he does here. Uh, <laughs> you know, great. I mean, credit to whoever manufactures his boots because this, 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 <laughs> this in, the, in these conditions, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You've got to yeah. give him his due. That is good. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, superb stuff. Superb. And then, you know, quickly, let's get back to that man, Benison. Benison on the score sheet. Um, I say did his stats on um just see if I can find him while I'm talking about him. Uh did his stats on in the sheds. See if I can find him while you talk us through it. Um yeah, there we go. Ten. So yeah, he's uh, played 10 games, five tries, yeah. one yeah. assist, 28 tackle busts, uh, five clean breaks, an average of eight point one per carry, uh, John Benison. Yeah, said. I mean that that's a that's shows some strength. Good, good finish, I mean, mate. Put the Castle defender on his backside. That's yeah, a good. that's a great kick. Yeah, in, in the good. conditions. I mean, we haven't seen T. Ritson get three Albert Goldfort points, but Benison did in this, and quite frankly, you know, I've got well no deserved. With that. Yeah, got no yeah. issue with that at all. Uh, two yeah. for Doddy and one for that man there, Mark Percival. Uh, Percival, just a class act, isn't he? Yeah, good. imagine, yeah. imagine if the injuries hadn't kind of taken the toll. What kind of a how good a player Percival could have been. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, he is, he is. Sorry, that's disrespectful. But, yeah. he, you know, the injuries have really kind of hampered him, which is a shame because he's he is, a, on his day, is again, another player who's unstoppable. Yeah, 22-0 to Saints. Fifth now in Super League. They will be at least fourth next week. Uh, I think that's a, an absolute shoe yeah. with, uh, with With a healthy points difference, I would have thought. Well, they're not, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> right, Gary Schofield again. He called it. No. Unbelievable. And tell you what, great. This is you know, the oh. try. I mean, I actually said on In the Sheds, Wakefield did to Salford what Salford did to everybody else. Tries yeah. from deep, kicking into corners. And we've been saying all year, if injuries come, what effect would it have on Salford? Did we get the answer in this one? We did. But where has this come from, from Wakefield? I mean, oh, wow. fair, fair play. I'm not complaining. It makes it more... I'm quite glad because it makes the bottom of the table comp oh. as competitive as the top. It's going to be interesting, man. And there's going to be David, teams David for feet has been shoulder. huge, man. For feet has been huge. Yeah. You know, I mean, you look at his stats in the last four games he's come back. Um, outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. I mean, he must he must have been close to team of the month. He was he was in he was in the mix. I mean, again, yeah. didn't didn't. Uh, Topple, Lamone or, or Malone, but yeah, he was in the mix. Him, Walters, uh, Vaughnett, Wormsley um, were yeah. in the mix. Surprisingly, yeah. Chris Satai wasn't in the mix. Um, that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, but uh, he has had a, he has been quiet of late. He's had a no, he's had a couple of big games, but equally yeah, but he, he's, he's, on a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Which is a shame. Um, but but uh, this, yeah, is, this was this was a, a bit of a surprise. This from Jowett. Look at this now. Look at this. Lovely. Oh, that's a thing of beauty, yeah. that is. Off yeah. to Reese Lynn. Reese Lynn, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, Reese Lynn, again, a, a totally underrated player, I think. Mate, really testimonial year, Reece been out injured again. He's been yeah. one of the injuries, hasn't he? Back yeah. in the side, playing well. Wakefield are getting some players back, so maybe this is the reason why yeah, they're playing a lot better. Ooh. What? Uh, Alex, Alex is saying, um, I'm thinking of Nene McDonald. No, I'm pretty certain it was James McDonald who got the one point for the Albert Goldfort medal. I'll check it, but I'm pretty certain it was James McDonald, not Nene McDonald, uh, who got that one. Um, please for Will Dagger. Of course, when he went to Wakefield, there was a lot of people scratching their heads. And I still think that Hull KR long term have got the better end of the stick on that one. However, good to see Will Dagger playing well. Solid. He's he's. Solid. He's not spectacular, but he's a solid player, yeah. um, and he'll do a job wherever you put Will Dagger. He will do a job, absolutely on the pitch. So you know, every team needs a needs a player like Will Dagger. I mean, that absolutely. was a little, that was a cheeky little pass back. This is nice. That. This is nice. Look at yeah, that. and nice. again, yeah, nice. Lafay, mate. Lafay. Yeah, yeah. So, cheeky little cheeky little flick out the back and then a pass back from Lafay. Ooh, absolute yeah. tremendous centre. And he's so part of the pressure here saying uh, Luke Gale has picked up a bad injury in training this week. That's uh, the rumour mill uh, there for, for Wakey. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's quickly do the Albert Golf Orb as we uh, 
a little look back. Three for Mr. Dagger. No issues with that. Two for Liam Hood and one for Luke Gale. So uh, those are how the Gold Fork medals went in that one. We now move on. We've got to get a pace on, or else we'll be here all night. Wigan yeah. taking on Huddersfield. And again, a team that needed to have a little bit of something about them. And to be fair to Huddersfield, it was better. I mean, when you consider that they only got less than 700 metres uh, against uh, Leeds, uh, they managed to actually out-metre Wigan. And the mad thing about this, every single conceivable stat, other than the score, was Huddersfield. When Huddersfield's way. Crazy. Unbelievable. Absolutely Unbelievable. Crazy. And it just says, lacking confidence, lacking execution. But, you know, something to build on. Yeah, lacking, and, and also kind of points towards maybe how good, how lethal Wigan are. In, Absolutely. In breaking teams down. You know, you can look at it both ways. Again, again, playing devil's advocate, you can yeah. look at it both ways in that yeah. Huddersfield were better with the stats, but, you know, Wigan were well, more mate, There's only one stat that matters in any sport. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scoreboard, isn't it? Exactly. But it was a big improvement versus the Leeds game. <laughs> Massive improvement. <laughs> yeah. well, stay with us, sir. Stay with us, sir. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm not really. long for this world. Lord, I'm not long for this Lord. world. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, a good a good performance. And again, field very similar try to the one that we just saw from from Wellsby. Um, you know, missing yeah. Game the, this well. is yeah. Is this it's the one good. where he does the little shimmy in the step? I mean, it's the little shimmy in the step, and and, and like yeah. I say, you know, just just quality. Here it comes. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, that, that look at that. That's that. Look at the balance. The oh. balance. Beautiful. Bill Blake esque. Beautiful, mate. It is lovely bit. Lovely bit Brilliant. of balance that. You know, from and this is what I mean, and it. You know, we just call it straight. You've got to, you've got to. I mean, if I'm watching that game, I'm applauding that. It was, it was absolute quality. Yeah. Now, quality. I'm not sure about this one. No, no, neither was I. <laughs> I'm really I don't know not what it is. sure about that. We're becoming. I mean, we'll get to it. A bizarre one in a minute, but I mean, yeah. I think we, we're sanitizing the game a little bit too much for me. I think you know we've got to, got to be careful. We, if, we're, if we're not careful, Look at we're going to be took and pass in, a, in five years, and, and the well, game will be the get the game will a, a lot of I've, I've read a lot of things online in, in newspaper reports and on rugby league websites, frightened frightened that the, the game is dying because of because of well, I mean, the good news, of the good news is the, well, these new rule changes that they're trying out in the academy. I think uh, even. Even the officials who are officiating the academy games, I think, are not fans of them as well. So no, uh, I, we'll just leave that there. Well, with, um, with rugby union, the rugby union players threatened to quit the sport because of yeah. similar rule. Um, that was lovely. That from Bibby. It was it? that was that was a, that was a that was an audition for Strictly. It was nice. But, it was nice. Why why can't the powers that be understand that it's the tackler who is in more danger of suffering a head injury than the person? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And it, I actually. And, and actually, they, they've started. I mean, for those who haven't seen an academy game, they're now they're now in doing uh, kick restarts from inside yes. the ball receiving half on the forty meters. If they if they had any nouse about them, it would actually be in the forty meters of the defending team, because yeah. that would mean that the attackers <laughs> would have to run further, further to run, right? which yes. would make it make them. To, and they'd actually conserve. Would they sprint? No, they conserve well, their well, energy. They well, would. The argument that was they've got more time to build up ahead of steam. I, I would be out, I'd have my asthma spray rubbish. after 20 yards. Exactly. What a load of rubbish. It's Albert Abbey, Goldfall. Yeah, let, let's, Albert not Goldfall. Go let's, Goldfall. let's not go Let's move on. Albert Goldfall. Three, three for Abbas Miski, two for Harry Smith, and one for Jai Field. So there you go. That's the Wigan game. Congratulations to Wigan, who, just for the record, are one place behind Lee. Uh, and speaking <laughs> of Lee, uh, that, that battle of the Borough and all that, uh, speaking <laughs> yeah. of Lee, this was, this was out. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, just even if you don't, just sit back and watch these tries. Oh, that was is injured. that not a shoulder charge though? But well, in the letter, the letter law, it's very close. But should he have not? Credit. Should should he have not had ten minutes for the, for that challenge? Watch. Credit. I mean, he, he does. Oh, you've not shot. You don't see it. But is that not a shoulder charge? That's brilliant wing play, mate. Is what yeah. that is. That's brilliant wing play. You've not you've not shown the um, the simbinning for for Mickey Lewis. Um, that's coming. 
Oh, is that coming? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. KR, right. KR's on the way, and it we've not done KR yet, nothing. Oh, um, yes. Oh, my, yeah. That's it. This is KR. This is this is, this is KR. KR yeah. yeah, no, I think I think I think they do show it. I think they do show it. Well, I thought it was uh, in the first few minutes of the game. Um, no, I don't. I don't know if he was. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's already off. Yeah, one of the most yeah. stupidest decisions I've ever seen. I, it was just Strange. ridiculous. The guy, it, it's absolutely battering it down, and he loses yeah. his footing. Yeah, and he, so uh, you know, you can see there, Ipape slides ten yards over the line. Yeah, ridiculous decision. Ridiculous it was absolutely. It was. It was. I mean, I'd be annoyed if I was a whole KR fan. And, and did he get a ban? Um, I've not seen it. I don't think he has. I don't think he has. Not, I'm not. I'm sure, not I'm sure some of our KF fans will confirm that. I'm not sure. If someone can have a look at that, I'm not. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not too I, sure on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, Cassiano got a ban. Yeah, I'm not so yeah, sure. Yeah, he got. Yeah, he got him. a game. Chamberlain there going in. Well done to Ed Chamberlain. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I said that, that Ipapi tried with with Lachlan Lamb. I mean, there's Lamb again. Look at him outstanding. Yeah. His run for the Ipapi try line was superb. And what I liked yeah. about Lee, Lee in this game. Was the amount of willing runners on the shoulder every single time? Hunting. That's how rugby should be played. Exactly, hunting. It's, Beautiful. Yeah, it's how this is how. And again, we're not blowing smoke up anybody's backside. No. This is how no. rugby should be played in wet weather, especially. No, Lewis didn't get a ban, thankfully. Right, good, good, because that was just Thank ridiculous. You, Ian. Yeah, just a caution, which is good, which yeah. is good. Good, I'm glad about that because it was quite possibly one of the most ridiculous decisions I've ever seen in my life. Penalty try? Not sure. I'm not. Can't, for it? me, you can't guarantee you'll get to the ball. No, it, it's it's one of them that, for me, it could go either way. Yeah. Um, let's put it this way. can't guarantee he'll get if to that's the ball. Settled, if that settled the game, it's controversial. The fact that it yeah. had no bearing on the game, fortunately, doesn't really yeah. matter. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought that that was... Um, I thought that generous, was let's say. Generous. Uh, Albert Goldthorpe gave three Man of Steel points to Robbie Mulhern, two for Amon, one for Dan Norman. Very unlucky, Lamb and Ipape not to be in there. But here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here That's it comes. Oh, what a line. What a mm. line. Beautiful. Beautiful, Robbie. One um, for vegans everywhere, that one. Yeah, absolute beauty. And Parcel was lucky there not to uh, get into some trouble. I don't. Yes, I mean, yeah, he was. You know, I mean, if if Mikey Lewis goes for ten for sliding on his bum, I'm sorry. That's that's ten. And I'm a big fan of Matty Parcel, but I'm sorry <laughs> that for me, that's, that's ten all day he, long. He, he didn't need to do that. Well, we, we saw that. that. We saw it down at Warrington a few right at the beginning yeah. of the season. Sliding in with knees. That is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, is it Parcel? Was it was it up a chip? No, it's up a chick, isn't it? I think it's up a chick. Sorry, yeah, yeah he, did, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't need to do that. He did, no. he did not need to do that. It, it, that for me, all day long, a, a, a ten minute spell on the bench. Yeah, for me. Um, yeah, uh, shocker, absolute shocker. And again, the fans form appear to be agreeing with us. It was a real poor, poor challenge. That one was the only real nice moment for Lee. Uh, sorry, for Paul KR was this Mikey Lewis. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's the, the okay. kid's got talent. He's, he's just, yeah, yeah he's nice. He's nice. a talented rugby player. He really he is. is. He is. He needs more around him at the moment, um, you know, but I mean, there's no doubt about it. Lewis is box office. And, uh, you know, disappointingly, they didn't get the zero, but I mean, like they care. Lee Leifert's yeah, yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. I can hear Steph say up me. And do you know what? He's not even saying he stopped the season now. He thinks he can win the Shield. Oh, my well, Lord. Who's to say he can? Let's hope they do. Who's uh, to say I, I tell you can. what, turn out, turn out, uh, okay, yeah, and, and players out. I thought Jordan Abdul spoke really well on TV. He did, he did yeah, I, agree. I thought he, he gave a real good uh, account of himself, and obviously don't want him to be injured for much longer. But no. let's hope they no. get they get him on again because he he spoke he spoke a lot of sense. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Tom Johnston there going in for yeah. keeping him ahead of Charlie uh, again by the one try. If Lee are going to win the shield. These are going to take some topple in the Catalan Dragons. They're in absolutely sensational form. Well, yeah, for a team that doesn't travel well, they're travelling well, and that 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 you know that that's that's got to be quite scary for the rest of Super League. Absolutely, and now I think they've got a period where um, oh yeah, they've got us feel this week. Oh dear me. Um, well, yeah. talking about away games, is it right that Lee haven't got a home game now? Yes, for five and, weeks? and thank you to a couple of the Lee Leopards fans for letting me know why it's deliberate. The relay in the pitch, 
So, right. uh, okay. because football and rugby gets played, right? and I, obviously, as non league fans, we wouldn't know that. So, thank you very much. And I made well, it's, it's women's to it. football, it's Man United's women who play that's there. right. Yeah, I made yeah. reference to it on In the Sheds, and thankfully, uh, quite a few league fans, uh, you know, informed Good. me. Good, I'm, so, I'm yeah. glad because that would be a massive, massive. Well, let me tell you though, mate, consensus. if they come out of those four games with some serious points, it's game on, and a place at Wembley, and a place at Wembley, Saints. Will not be looking forward to that. I don't care what any Saints fan says. They will not be looking forward to that. Heart in the mouth stuff because no. Lee will Lee Lee will go and play. No doubt. They've got nothing to lose. Go nothing. Play. Go do what these did. Do what Hull FC did to him. Don't show him any respect. Go out yeah. there and play him. Go out yeah. there and play him. You've got the forwards to do it. You've got the backs to do it. Just go out and play him. We'll talk about that in more detail next week. There goes our Chris yeah. showing yeah. his next employers what he's all about. Over he goes. Yeah, beautiful try. I've got a lot of time for Chris Satte. Well, the size well, of him, you would, you would, wouldn't you? But you know, he, he's a great forward. He, he, I thought he looked overweight. Catalan have got a real good, good buy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought he looked overweight when he came to Warrington earlier in the season, but he's really got his match sharpness with him now. But, yeah, uh, the, I think a lot looked like that pre, uh, in the first few games of the season. Yeah, I, th- I think pre-season's all about bulking, and then through the season, it's all about shredding. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I even sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, but me being ex Great Britain prop. <laughs> absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. But no, I mean, look, great, uh, great. I mean, this is a, a real assured way. I mean, don't get me wrong, though. Whole, whole FC battle the way back into this. I All mean, playing you know, really well at the moment. Yeah, they are. I mean, um, they, they really oof, did. I mean, see again, the, see the posts. Good try. Do you know what though? Fair play, fair play to Goodham on there. Fair yeah. play. You know his arm never touches the ground. He's got his he's got his smarts about him, and yeah. uh, you know in 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 it goes to Goodham on the bus game. I'm trying to remember who it was. I mean bus guy actually. Um, well, yeah, Goodham's off to Leeds. Uh, is Goodham off to Leeds? Yes, he is. Yes, yeah, he is, isn't uh, he? And this will be a blow for uh, all FC. Swift, I believe, is injured and uh, yeah. Will be off for a, a bit of a layoff, which is a big blow for them because Swift has been in in great form. Yeah, yeah, and again, why why is that not six again? I, th- I think a lot of coaches are uh, again a little bit fed up with his six. As as are most fans, I mean that's a great yeah. finish. It is, but as are yeah. most fans, but I think I don't think anybody's in support of this six again rule anymore. It, it was yeah. it was all right when when COVID was was playing a part, but. It's yeah. so arbitrary and so random who gets six again and who doesn't. Yeah, I agree. And at what stage of the game? And who was it this week? Penalty, mate. There should be no six again. In no, the attacking penalty. team, yeah, the attacking penalty. team is in their own half. There should be no six again. I like six again if the I, I don't team, know. I don't no, know. I, it's so I arbitrary. If, no, but if the attacking team are in the ascendancy and are looking potent, then to keep six again going keeps the momentum. Whereas, so for example, if you so it's the option that rather than give a penalty and allow the defensive line to retreat, and here we go again. I've got no issue at that point. But if a if a play if a team's in their own half, for me, just give the penalty. It's just, My I'm only thinking. issue with that is it's an extra thing for a referee to think about. Yeah. That, that's my only issue with that. I mean, was it is it last at Casford who, who said that? Um, I think he was last at Casford saying that, it, that their game was a perfect example of where they didn't get six again until the game was lost. And then it was a case of the referee evening it up. And, you know, is he talking out of turn or, or do most fans think that that does happen in most games? I don't know. No. But I, I, for one, would get rid of I don't know what the fans for him think. Oh, I Steph's, think Steph's, Steph's, Steph's in agreement. He yeah. said he'd rather have a penalty and go for two. Yeah. Which, you know, get rid of six enough. again. Get yeah, rid of well, it. Yeah. Uh, it looks like the goalposts might have moved at Hull. Ian saying that... Um, Swifty should be okay. I think straight after the game, there was concerns, but it looks as though he's okay. Well, that's good that's news. Good. Good that's news good. for fans. Uh, Albert Goldthorpe, three for Davis, no issues. He's metres out of this world. <laughs> 260 <laughs> metres. Wow. And yeah. when you think he's tries, he had to run for him. I mean, the amount of work he did off his own goal line, incredible. Yeah. Uh, two for Whitley <laughs> and one for Arto Romano. So uh, that's, uh, that's where we are with that. Right, okay, it's now time. For the Super League Raw team of the week, here he comes. Mm-hmm. 
It's the Sibley Royal Team of the Week for round number 17. Here we go again. And on debut at fullback is Mr. Max Jowett of Wakefield Trinity. Boy, how have they missed him for long spells this season. Some sensational try assisting in this one. Jowett has no errors and given away no penalties in six appearances for Trinity this year. Quality. Uh, number two. Well, if one Tom doesn't get you, the other one will. As Tom Davis jumps out of the shadow of Johnston against Hull FC to record a brilliant brace at some exceptional metres. As the Spencer Davis group won said keep on running and number three well not only is he keeping Matic of Alu on the sidelines but he's not budging from our team of the week either to stop him on impression on Mr Romano sensational monsieur and number four well keeping his spot week on week as well will be Reese Martin his adaptation to centre in 2023 has been a real lifesaver for Rowan Smith the ability to master multiple positions is a real example of class and Martin has that in abundance. At number five, back for his second selection of the season is Ash Hanley. Back on the wing against the wire. His brace now takes him to eight for the season. Just three short of the top five try scorers in Super League. Well played, Mr. Hanley. At number six, at standoff, is the player who called out his chairman, Blake Austin. Whilst his career advancement techniques may be questionable, his rugby league at present is faultless. Austin only stay a real handful, as he demonstrated against the Primrose and Blue. At number seven, is there a better player than this man in Super League at this moment in time? He oozes class, doesn't he? Lachlan Lamb, he's got his sights set on not only team honours, but individual ones too. At number eight, and staying in the team for the second week, is Sam Walters. Whilst Tom and Moan of Lee ran for more metres, Walters' contribution was paramount to Leeds coming away from the Halliwell Jones with two points and has just picked Amone this week at nine. Also retaining his spot is Edwin Pape. Full KR could not live with his power, pace and all-round rugby ability. Pape now showing why so many had him for a contender for Man of Steel at the start of the season. He'll have to get in line behind Lachlan Lamb. At number ten, and for his second out of the season, he's Rob Mulhern. Is there a better front row in Super League at this moment in time? He's running line to Irady de Ledet and Luckley was exceptional, leaving Tang guys and into shout Mayday as the big front rubber crashed over. At number 11 is Sione Matautia. After coming back after his long layoff due to concussion protocols, he has been in great form for the Saints with this performance, perhaps the pick of the bunch. Not only did he carry the ball over the line, but three Tigers as well. At 12, take a bow, Ed Chamberlain. When I'm wrong, I'll own it. Not good enough for Super League. We'll just see about that, he says. Three tries in two games for the big fella and a new position of second row. Oh, he's going to take some shifting. Based on this performance, well played, sir. And finally, at 13 on debut is Mr. Versatile, Mr. Wakefield himself, Liam Gay. His defence was full blooded His metres were second only to Ben Garcia. But his opening try gave Trinity the confidence that it was going to be their day. And they never looked back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Team of the Week for round number 17. The team of the week for round number 17 goes into the record books here at Super League Raw. Uh, there it is in all of its glory, Reggie. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, monsieur. Oh, monsieur. <laughs> it's such an a, little a little bit of French there, a little bit of barley brew France coming in from Mr. Mike. Romano. You can't get you can't get more classy than this show, mate. You really can't. Oh, no, but uh, it's added value. I think they call it added value these days. Absolutely. Uh, can't argue with can't argue education. with any of that. I'm good to see some wakey players in there as well. Yeah, Jowett was superb. Yeah. Okay, superb. Uh, and, you know, and hey, costing. Hey, when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. I have massive doubts over Ed Chamberlain. By yeah. Lord, what a June he's had. He has been outstanding. And the second row as well. Yeah, mate. Sometimes, sometimes just a little incredible. tweak can bring the best out in players. Well, yeah, injuries, versatility, you know, there's yeah. been an opening there, you know, you think the quality that, you, I mean, you've got Ollie, I mean, for me, when O'Donnell comes back, Holmes has got it, has got it on to how Chamberlain, the way Chamberlain's played. Well, oh, he's, he's been outstanding. I, well, I don't think home, well, I'm not a coach, but I don't think Holmes figures when that happens. No, well, it'd be, maybe from uh, the bench, but yeah, you know. maybe from the bench. But though, like I say, uh, four four lead players, uh, four leads players, couple of wakey, couple of Catalan, and uh, Sione Mitalti. Great to see Sione Mitalti back and playing so well as well. He's had a tough season, hasn't he? He's had he a has. real tough season. He with, with, he with his, he's had his knocks, but yeah, yeah absolutely, um, absolutely. On his on his day again, another player who is sometimes unplayable. Yes. For a, for a second rower. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Right, we've now come to the point in the show where we're going to do our final uh, award of June, the award for the best player of June. Now, we are not the Albert Goldthorpe, and we are not the Man of Steel. We should there's be. A lot of people, there's a lot of people out there showing <laughs> a lot of love for the likes of Lachlan Lamb, for Edwin Pape. But it's the forwards that win games. They can mm. do what they do if it ain't for the forwards. So you won't get this on any other show. We have got a forward as the player of June. Robbie Mulhern, take a bow. Absolutely sensational. It's about yeah. consistency. Reg, I'm just going to give you a couple of stats, mate, and then I'll bring you in. It's about, okay. consi- it's about consistency, ladies and gentlemen. So let me explain to you how consistent Mr Mulhern has been. Against Wakefield, Robbie scored a try, 110 metres, 29 tackles. He then goes and plays Hull FC, another 100-plus game, 132 metres, 37 tackles. He then goes to Catalan in defeat and does 111 metres and 38 tackles. And then he goes to, he plays KR at the weekend, get this, 164 metres from 14 play the balls, 22 tackles, six tackle busts. He had two tackle busts against Wakefield, three against FC, and one against Catalan. Robbie Mulhern, unsung hero, somebody said that in the chat. He has been, quite simply, devastating for Lee. And let me tell you, if you were to ask Lachlan Lamb, Ipape, Reynolds, O'Brien, Hardacre, any of them, I think every single one of them would support that decision. Over to you, Reg. I disagree. A good job I'm not a betting man. But, yeah, hats off. Hats off. He's, 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 he had glimpses of this when he played for Warrington. Um, mm. But, you know, I'm, I'm made up for him. I'm made up for him. I, I had a lot of time for Robbie Mulhern. I thought he was a... If he'd have been given his chance, he would have been a good player. Still um, is. <laughs> No, no, for Warrington. For Warrington, yeah, yeah. No, I know. For Warrington. I know what you mean. Let me finish. I know, you I know what you're just winding <laughs> you up. I, know. I stopped then because I was watching two pigeons fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying I'm bored. But... <laughs> Steph, but yeah. you're on next week. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but where was I? Yeah, I think he, was, he wasn't given the chance to, to fulfil his potential at Warrington, and I'm glad he's doing it, Lee. Well, let's put really it this way. Am. He was probably our best player last year, most consistent, I would say, yeah. last yeah. year. Not that he had, yeah. not that he had much to beat, but there you go. Um, you know, I think him, Ashton, and Williams, top three, yeah. for him last year. Yeah. So congratulations so, to Robin. Such a shame they couldn't, such a shame they couldn't come to an agreement. Absolutely. Congratulations to him. Uh, let's hope he continues on the same trajectory. He's been absolutely sensational. Right. This is how the league looks. There it is. The Catalan Dragons now four points. Ahead at the top of Super League, then the Lee Leopards. The Lee Leopards second, then the Warriors into third. Warrington now down to four, probably going to slide further uh, this week, depending on how bad the result is against Saints. Could even be, I can't believe I'm saying this, six, uh, depending on the Red Devils. Uh, I think we may well be six. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'm fifth at worst, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we just need some bodies back and quick. And then, of course, you know, outside of the top six, you've got the Robins there on 18 points. Again, not in the best of form. The Rhinos now starting to look somewhat light, but, they're, you know, they're still four points off the, the playoffs. It's, uh, you know, time is running out for these teams. We'll have to see a massive game coming up. We're going to get to the games in a minute um, as the certainly the top six aspirations of a couple of these teams could easily be sorted out in the next couple of weeks, such is the way in which the season is going. But there you go. That's the league. Trinity giving themselves a lifeline as well at the bottom. And actually, Greg, get your get your take on this. I said on In the Sheds, Trinity. Trinity, um, Castleford, I think the Giants are going to be okay. But certainly Tigers. Um, I don't think it's necessarily about the wins. It could come down to how big the losses are as well. I agree, and I think Tigers right. have to be looking over the shoulder because I think Trinity have to play them and the, those and the Giants again yeah. fairly soon. Um, yeah, it, it's the size of, or it's a points difference that could be the the deciding factor. If Huge. I'm a Tigers fan, Boyd. at this moment in time, like we were this time last year, <clears throat> I'd be a little worried. 
I really would be. Yeah. yeah. Alex Sharp saying, yeah, you're quite right, Alex. There is still 20 points to play for, but, you know, we're 17 games in. The league table doesn't lie. But Leeds at the moment, two good back-to-back -back wins. Yeah, I can see why you're being optimistic, mate. It's uh, you certainly, it's certainly game on. There's no yeah. doubt about that. It certainly is yeah. game on. So uh, there we are. That's how it looks. Let's now get into the prediction league. This is where we uh, where we currently are. And it was a decent week for Greg and I. 16 yeah. points apiece. Yeah. yeah. 16 points for us. 14 for Gary Schofield. An absolute shocker for the fans for him. They only picked up eight last week, which means... In now... fact, Warrington let me down. If Warrington hadn't scored, I'd have had an extra three points. Well, there you go. That's greedy. That's greedy. Uh, but that's where... <laughs> That's where the uh, that's where the prediction league currently stands. Um, yes, yeah, so let's get into some predictions. Starting off this Friday at uh, the Be Well uh, Stadium, uh, Support Stadium, Wakefield taking on Wigan Warriors. Let's not forget, last year nobody gave Wakey a prayer against Wigan in the same fixture, and Wakey won it. Uh, really interesting. Let's uh, hear what the you know, get your predictions in the chat. Those who are watching us. Uh, Gary Schofield, he's gone Wigan 9-17. to 17. I agree with him. I do think that Wigan will win this, um, albeit I think Wakey will be competitive. 9-17. to 17. Uh, The fans form, though, see it as a Wigan 18+. plus. Greg, where do you see it? I Wakefield are on a roll. Yeah. They're on a roll. I know, and a lot, there's got a lot to be said for momentum. Um, and, you know, if they can, if they can back those results up, you know, I can see Wigan 9 to 17. Outstanding. So uh, it's, a, it's a clean sweep. It's a clean yeah, sweep. Yeah. But, but I'll tell I, you. I was going to go Wigan 18 plus, but I, I think I think Wakefield have found something. Well, if the reports not, maybe not, of Gale are correct, that's a blow. For but, yeah. Yeah. It, but they've found something yeah. that Wigan may well struggle at parts of the game, but I, I still think. I don't think it'll be the the the, the whitewash that, that some people predict, but I think Wigan will win. Well, all bar Linda Blumsom are saying Wigan, she's going wakey one to eight. God bless you. Uh, God bless you. Give them some encouragement. And do you know what? You might be it, right. You used to say, stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. We then go into this one. The Castleford Tigers taking on the Lee Leopards. And I, I fear for Castleford is the same, exactly the same way that I fear for KR the middle unit will destroy Castleford's middle unit. They will absolutely destroy him. I can't remember the actual stat. In fact, let me find it. I, I, I mean, my dad was down yesterday and he, what, he, he I was talking to him about the, the lean all KR game and yeah. uh, the meters, mate, the meters. So in, in game of the week, I said, I thought the problem that KR would have would be the middle unit. Yeah. In that game, Luckley and King started for KR. Amon and Mulhern started for Lee. Luckily, and King got a combined total of 97 metres in that game, compared to 327 on the other side. Yeah. I mean, you've got no prayer now. You've got, you've got, you haven't got a prayer. And, and the fact that, you know, it sounds like it's the same old, same old. Hopefully, Robbie Mulhern's okay. Yeah. If it's, yeah. The, same, if it's the same pack going into this, like Warrington did. When we had a bit of a pack at the start of the season, I think they will absolutely bulldoze them. I'm well, going Lee 18 plus, Gary Schofield 9 to 17, fans forum 18 plus for Lee. Over to you, sir. I think, like I said a few weeks ago, when, when Lee beat Warrington, at the start of the season, nobody would have even considered the fact that Lee's pack could have matched our pack. And, and, and it's, it, you know, it, I, 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 can't, I can't see Cass. With, with again, no disrespect to the players they've got, just just that Lee Pack is phenomenal at the minute, and it's on a roll. Best in Super League, mate. Bam on. And I'm going 18 plus Lee. Well, pretty much the chat is following suit, albeit Ian Judson's trying to have a Gary Schofield moment. He's going Castleford 9 to 17. Good Lord. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Uh, but you're going 18 plus, yeah? I think I have to, yeah. Good man. Good man. Right. We then to. get to the uh, we then get to the Sky game, a little game happening at Halliwell Jones Stadium as Warrington take on St. Helens. I think uh, Gary Schofield in his column in League Express, very, very harsh on Matt Dufty, saying if he wasn't an Australian, would he have been dropped? Dufty's been okay. He's he, he's he's made the least amount of errors of any fullback in Super League. 
He's not. He's not. I, I don't know where they're coming from with Matt Dufty for me. I, 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 unless I'm seeing it wrong, I just don't know why Dufty's getting very, very assured under the uh, high ball. Dangerous uh, in attack. He he's made. I think when Matt Dufty makes a mistake, it's a howler. Um, and and I think I genuinely think that's what it is. When he does make when he does make a mistake. It's a big mistake that leads to to points being scored, and I think that's the reason. You know, some players can do little tiny knock-ons, can drop balls, and it it comes to nothing. When Matt Dufty's made mistakes this season, more often than not, it's led to points being scored against Warrington. I think that's what he's getting at. Um, harsh, though. Yeah, quite possibly harsh. Um, do you know what my, the little voice in my head is saying? Warrington can do that, do this, but common sense prevails, and this is going to be Saints by eighteen plus. Yeah, everybody's gone on Saints by eighteen plus. I was very close to saying nine to seventeen because, like last year, nobody gave Warrington a prayer against Saints last year, and they very nearly did them. They will. You'd ha- you'd hope that Warrington will lift but they won't lift enough to win it um, okay. for me. Um, be, it'll be interesting to see. Right, we then move to... What have to you said stats. then, 9 to 17? All right, no, I'm on 18. 18's all across yeah. the board for, for Saints. Yeah, right, we then go to this one on Saturday in Perpignan. Uh, Catalan Dragons taking on Huddersfield. Catalan, a winning streak of seven. Can you see it not being a winning streak of eight, Greg? No. You can't. No. Uh, again... Stranger things have happened. Yeah. I just, you know, Watson is, is under serious, serious pressure, I think. Um, Watson but I, 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 I think Catalan, I think 18 plus Catalan. 18 plus to Catalan. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, for just my, our friends in Huddersfield, but even you, you, you've got to admit that it's not looking good at this moment in time. No, it's looking pretty damn grim. Uh, The way in which this has gone, um, Catalan uh, 18 plus, I'm going, you're going Catalan 18 plus, Uh, the fans form are going Catalan 18 plus, as is Gary Schofield. So no major surprises there. Right, it's now time for the game of the week. Here it comes. This week it had to be, didn't it? The whole derby, a city divided once again. Obviously a massive, massive win for Hull KR uh, in Rivals Round this year when, well, let's quite frankly say it, they absolutely demolished it for breakfast. Say whatever you want, the Hull FC. But this is a different Hull FC team now getting into a a bit of a groove. Tony Smith getting his uh, thumbprint on it. Uh, And here's one for you. Um, before you uh, come in here, Reggie, um, myself, Gary Schofield and the Fans Forum all see this as a black and white win on the weekend. We actually see Hull FC as the winners. I've got 90-17 FC. Uh, the Fans Forum and Gary Schofield a li- little closer one to eight. Um, for those people who are, who are disappointed over us not really talking too much about the Saints Warrington game, everybody pretty much thinks that Saints will win that by 18 plus. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, go on, mate. Uh, Hull FC. Yeah, we've not really had a shock of the round, have we, yet? We haven't. And everybody would think that Hull would 
kind of quite easily win this. Um, well, the form's I, with them, isn't and it? And what? The, the form is the with, with them. Now. Tony Smith is with them. Hulk KR have, 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 hit, have hit kind of a, a bad patch at the wrong time coming into this game. As I say, there hasn't been a shock this round yet. So I'm going to go Hull 9 to 17. <laughs> yeah. No shocks. Yet the no, I think it's going to be a weekend of no shocks. We've had, we've had no Wakefield at all. We've had Wakefield, uh, you know, providing the shocks um, over the last couple of weeks. I think this week it'll all go to form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I absolutely. Think, uh, I absolutely. The whole, I think the whole will will have a little bit too much. I think, okay, I've probably got too many out. Hull out, running into Spark by Magic Weekend. Yeah. They, they seem yeah. to have found the mojo since Magic Weekend. And, and you know, I think, yeah. And, and is this, what time is this on TV? It's big day, Sunday. Same time as Warrington Women versus Saints Women at the Halliwell Jones? Shocking. Absolute shocker. So which you actually going FC by? Nine to seventeen. Nine to seventeen. Same as me. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then bringing down the curtain on the weekend. Salford taking on the Rhinos. Good news for Salford. It is thought that the spine could be back for this one, which I think is big. And that's why I've gone Salford. I'm going Salford one to eight. Uh, the fans forum and Gary Schofield going leads nine to seventeen. But I'm going to take a punt here. If rumours are true, the spine returns for Salford. I'm going Salford. I am going to go. I don't think there'll be a shot this weekend. I'm going Rhinos 9 to 17. Okay, so just me going Salford yeah. on that one. One thing's for certain, it's going to be some great rugby league play. That could be a stroke weekend. of genius, sir. It could be, or it could be disastrous. But anyway, you've got to take these little gambles, haven't you? Every now, every and, again, now and again, mate. Along, every now and along again. the way. OK, fantastic. Well, there you go. Let's take a look at what you've got to look forward to on the TV this week. And there you can see, I don't know if it'll be enjoyable, but on Friday, oh, Warrington take on St. Anne's in terms of the chat. Uh, pretty split. Uh, Rhino's coming in. No, actually, it is very, very split. Quite a lot of love for Salford uh, in the chat. Uh, Leeds, um, yeah, probably Salford just about edging it in the chat, which is interesting. Uh, no, Warrington... Warrington Saints on Friday night. Then on Saturday, the Eels take on the Warriors at 8.30, followed by the Bunnies taking on the Canterbury Bulldogs at 10.35. Then on Sunday, the Gold Coast Titans take on the Dolphins before the Hull Derby. KR, the Robins, taking on Hull FC. And that is one not to be missed. Hull FC mm. wanting retribution for that absolute demolition at the MKM earlier in the campaign. Yeah. Huge yeah. stuff. Well, that is... Just over another hour and a half of our lives come and gone, but it's been most enjoyable. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. Enjoyed it. Get yourselves to the games, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go and support your team. We will be back next week with all the action from round 18. We'll be taking a little sneak preek at the uh, the Challenge Cup as well, and the semis, of course. Uh, is it that next week? Is, that, is it next week or the week after? Yeah, oh, no, week it's, after. it's the week after. No, we'll yeah, it's the week after, 19. yeah. I'm getting giddy. I'm yeah. getting giddy. I'm looking forward to that Lisa Saints game. You know, all that about. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, but yeah, get out to the game. Go and support the game. Uh, nothing like seeing Rugby League live. And get yourself out to some of these, you know, uh, Super League women's games and some of the academy and some of the reserve games. Trust me. Yeah. Really, really good quality Rugby League. What else are you doing on a Saturday? Um, or a Sunday? On a get Sunday. The same on time the whole derby kicks off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Oh, some, great, say, some great Steph, games at Amateur 11. Go on. Steph Sale, Steph Sale saying keep the programme going now. Good lad, Steph. Steph wants <laughs> a Tuesday night. That's what we like to see. Stop well, the programme now. Stop the programme. Yeah, somebody say, stop it now. But uh, Steph, Steph's loving it. Unfortunately, now he's got to go back to uh, the wife and kids. Bless him. Uh, but that's life. That's life. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. We'll be back next Tuesday. Game of the week. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. Not quite sure what night that's going to go out on yet. It might even go out on the morning of the game. Keep your eyes peeled on that. It'll all depend on uh, when the interviews are done for those games. So keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, we're going to go out with the top performers. A couple of changes again oh. uh, this week. A couple of changes. Okay. So we'll stay, okay. stay, in, stay until the end. But Greg, see you next week, mate. All the best. Absolute pleasure as usual. Thanks Take to all care. our new members and we'll see you all next week, guys. Mm -hmm.